Terry, it is so nice to see you and congratulations on your ongoing successes. How about we start with your summer drilling program? Yeah, we had a, a really uh, great summer drilling program. Uh, was, uh, we reported last week uh, at Beaver Creek that uh, we expanded the line zone by 50%. The line zone, just to refresh people's minds, is the, uh, I guess, the breakthrough uh, polymetallic discovery that we've made at NIST. And uh, we have, uh, last winter, we drilled 16 holes, 15 of the 16 hit, and more than half of them were, I would call spectacular. You know, pretty much anyone would, I guess. <laughs> you get 10 meters of 10% copper equivalent, that's spectacular. So uh, this summer, we drilled 13 holes, 11 of the 13 hit. Um, expect similarly, sort of like half of those to be, you know, really great hits. I mean, we published uh, seven core pitchers in that press release, and uh, our pitcher to great hit ratio is 100%. So we're hoping to maintain that average with uh, these assays as they come in. And of course, this expanded your winter drilling program by 90%. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, we, we basically had two objectives in the summer program. One was to ex expand the line zone. The second was to, you know, we, uh, you know, Dr. Steve Beresford joined the board and he's sort of the top, I would think, or, or one of the top polymetallic minds in the, in the scientific world. So he has a very specific approach to how to successfully uh, explore for polymetallics. And uh, some of those uh, tactics include, you know, a lot of ground uh, gravity, EM, and downhole EM. So we actually drilled four uh, 1,000 meter uh, barren holes purposely to go parallel the structure of both, both NISC main and the line zone to put the downhole EM machines in. <laughs> and he's found over time that that's the most effective way to find the continuations to these zones and find other zones. And uh, he would know because he spent, you know, several hundred million dollars exploring that way. And that's why you hire smart people is they, they, they have tricks of the trade and approaches that, uh, that can save you just millions and millions of dollars in terms of exploration and uh, be the key, key difference between success and failure. So we're, you know, we've got the ability, the cash to do it right, and we're doing it right. There's such a buzz going on about power nickel right now that undoubtedly you're attracting people to power nickel that may not really understand the resource sector. Can you kind of explain to that audience why power nickel is such an attractive company to do your due diligence on today? Yeah, we usually start on the macro and we sort of say, look, look at the, you know, the equity to commodity ratio. And that's absolutely at the peak right now. So equities are at the very top and commodities are at the very bottom. And historically, that doesn't stay that way for long. And and when they you know swing back, uh, it's quite usually quite savage. And and often the best time in, in investing, and you'll know this, is we go from bad to less bad. So I think that's happening across the sector. So that's a great first step. And then we talk about, well, if you're going to play in the sector, what do you want to play with? You you obviously want to, you know, find somebody that's well capitalized, somebody that's got, you know, proven track record people following them and somebody that's, uh, you know, hopefully got a commodity that you like. So the cool thing about power nickel is that we're not one commodity. We're not nickel. We're, we're not copper. We're not gold. We're all, you know, we have nickel, copper, and then noble metals. We think we'll be sort of a third, a third, a third, and noble metals is gold, silver, platinum, palladium. So so polymetallic mines like Norilsk are the world's biggest and most valuable. So finding one of these is truly transformative for uh, the company and indeed a country. So so the the potential we're showing right now at Norilsk or at NISC is you know fantastic, and that's why we've attracted so many great investors and why it's appealing to even uh, broad-based investors that wouldn't nord ordinarily consider mining, but they see it as a great asymmetric bet to play the mining sector at, at a time where it's appropriate to play. And of course, in addition to attracting a significant network of investors, you also are attracting some sizable partners. In particular, I was very impressed with the deal you made with CBMR. Can you talk to us or provide an update on that? Yes, yeah, we're uh, really happy with uh, CBMR. They're they're the largest private nickel uh, refiner in the world. Um, their you know um, biggest client is US DoD. Um, they have like 4,000 employees. They have 18 plants around the world, building another three. Uh, why that's attractive for us is um, they are probably they're best known for making nickel powders. So nickel powders are the, the best uh, way to receive nickel for an EV company, but also for 3D printing and armament purposes. So its market is growing by 26% a year, and they uh, get sixty dollars to $80,000 a ton. I don't know if you looked at LME lately, nickel, but it's like more like 15, 16,000 a ton. So 
if you can get in the nickel powder business, that's a very big deal. So with CVMR, that's what we hope to do. We'll be releasing a uh, feasibility study in the coming weeks uh, on that very point. And uh, we think we're making great progress with CVMR on that and looking forward to updating the market on it when it's, uh, when it's out. Well, speaking of updating the market, you're currently like a rock and roll star. What is it, a 10 city tour or what are we on right now, Terry? You know what? I'm, uh, we're, we were in Beaver Creek. I'm in Vancouver now. I'm actually giving a speech tonight at the uh, um, uh, what we hope will be the next premier of BC, John Rustad's for. Uh, we're talking about saving BC mining. Uh, you know, and talking about the, you know, we've focused at uh, Save Canadian Mining, which I found it on the issue of predatory short selling. So we'll be talking about that tonight with the uh, with the hope that John will push this through when he gets in office, we hope, in the next few weeks. Uh, then I'm I'm off to London for some investor meetings, uh, Sweden uh, for some investor meetings, back to London for more, and then back to Toronto, where we're actually going to be bringing up uh, some analysts to NISC in uh, early October. I've got to meet with the... Uh, uh, our friends, the First Nations, uh, James Bay Cree, who have been so great to, to work with. And uh, then we'll eventually get home in mid-October. <laughs> so it's we're going to ho hopefully have Canadian Thanksgiving, though, so that'll be okay. Well, we look forward to getting an update when you return from your tour. Terry, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Have a great day. Cheers.